We all have jokes, but only the truly gifted can turn that into a career. Can I make it in one of the hardest comic scenes in the world, or will I be booed off the stage? Find out now on the show that tackles the most unique gigs you won't find in your job search, Jobs Unlisted. New York, New York. They say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So over the next few days, I'm gonna see if I can make it as a stand-up comedian. My mentor, Reg Thomas, is gonna guide me through this process, and then I'm gonna deliver some of my own material in front of a live audience. How hard can this be? Reg, what up, bro? How are you? What up, champ? How you feeling? Good, good. This is day one. I'm trying to be a stand-up comedian. Tell us who you are. I'm Reg Thomas from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. I've been doing about six years now. Like a girl from Brooklyn would shut you down before you could try to get her number. <laughs> You just see her walking up the block, you're like, excuse me, miss, can I talk to you for a second? Time's up. It's kind of be something I was always been in love with, but I didn't realize I was gonna be doing. I've always been a good storyteller and I always like writing. And so when I first did stand up for the very first time, I was just trying it. I was just like, this is it. This is all I wanna do. Right now we're at the New York Comedy Club. Why is this place important? So many amazing comics we discover here. It's one of the best spots in New York to perform at. How well does stand-up comedy pay? If you're doing a comedy club during the weekday, you're probably not getting much. But on the weekends, weekends pay way more. Let's say you're a comedian who's on TV and like now you're famous. Now you're in town and like people want to see you. Now their tickets are 50. Like you headline a club out of state, you might make like 70 grand that weekend. 70 bands in one weekend. Even like a regular comic, you can make, you can put, walk out of a city with like three, four bands. So at the end of all of this, I am performing a stand-up set myself. From what you see, am I gonna sink or am I gonna swim? I'm gonna help you the best I can. And my picture's on the wall for a reason. So, well, shoot, maybe if I do good enough, mine will replace yours. You gotta do really good for that to happen. Well then, stay tuned, my brother. that's what's about to happen. <laughs> How do we start this process? How do we get the wheels turning? You start with a pen and pad and you just start writing ideas, okay. right? Well, I have neither of those, so. You're doing great. <laughs> Good, uh, I'm glad. You're a real millennial about this. I, just I want can you tell, know. shit. All right, so tell me something about yourself. Like, you're black or what? What are you? I am black, I'm white. I'm black and white. My pops is black, my mom is Italian. I just asked about who you are, but like, I'm not forcing you to make black or white jokes. Right, right, right. Like, tell me about Queens. Tell me about growing up in New York City. Tell me about media, like, what's that like? Tell me about traveling. There was a shorty that I really was feeling on the train like a month and a half ago. This might be a good one. You have some train material, so let's work on that, all right? Okay, let's do it. All right, so talk to me about being up on the stage. Give it up for your hosts and give it up for yourselves. Something like that, yeah, boom. Something Is that like good? That. No. Uh, <laughs> you hold the mic like a rapper. I grab it like this. Grab so it like a rapper and then put and it then into the comedian. Right Boom. here. Yeah, I'm not even a cat calling kind of guy. You yeah, know? I'm not even the type to be bothering women on the show. I don't, I'm not the type to be bothering. But sell it in your face. But, se sorry. I thought I was supposed to be repeating what you were saying, sorry. You take the one headphone out and you hold it right here. Boom. And you lean into it, what? The wrist. What? What do you want? Right, there you go. All right, so Reg, how you feeling? Good? I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's almost there. I know I didn't come prepared today, but I will go home tonight and fucking practice. Nah, dog, you got your first open mic tonight. You got your first open mic tonight. I have my first open yeah. mic tonight. Next coming to the mic, we've got the guy you've all seen around town before. Goes by the name of Speedy Mormon. Woo! Give it up, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's hard meeting women in New York, but I want to tell you guys about this time I was on the train. There was this very beautiful woman. You know, I'm about to sit next to her, I sit down. She has her headphones in, I'm like, excuse me. She's like, what? What the fuck do you want? In my head, I'm like, damn, I thought she was sweet. You, you mean. But I'm like, shit, sorry. I was just wondering if this train was local or express. So yeah. All right guys, I'm gonna give the rest of the time to the room. Speedy fucking sucked. He did worse than I thought he would. But I do see a lot of room for improvement. He did catch a couple laughs. So the thing Speedy needs to work on is his stage presence, his cadence of words, and his timing. Son, welcome to the world of comedy. I got way more lined up for you before the week's over. Okay. Before your big show. You feeling ready for it? After some more work, yes. 
My first open mic was much harder than I expected, but I learned a lot. Over the next couple of days, I worked on my writing skills and did more open mics. When I'm racially ambiguous, uh, I can pass for Indian, and I was never able to catch a cab, except for when the taxis thought we were swapping shifts. Then they would definitely <laughs> pull over. Tonight is my final performance. Keeping it 100, I'm not really feeling very confident right now. These people actually paid for tickets. On top of that, someone fucked up the spelling of my name on the bill. Oh well, no going back now. So please welcome to the stage, Speedy Mormon, everybody. Oh shit. What did I sign myself up for? Goodness gracious. Well, hello everyone, my name is Speedy. I don't actually do the stand-up comedy shit. I have a job. <laughs> I'm not broke. <laughs> but uh, before my job, now I worked at Costco. The good thing about Costco, it actually pays pretty well. But the bad thing is they promote the fact that they pay well. For $15 an hour, you weren't just a bag boy, but like to customers, you were their bag boy. I work in media now and I was at a Chris Brown concert and uh, Chris Brown comes on stage. He's wilding, right, doing all his shit. Boom, boom, boom. Shorty's going crazy. Takes his shirt off, throws the shit to the side. The most gangster guy in his whole entourage, teardrop tattoo, runs up, times it, and catches the T, folds it, and lays it over his arm, gracefully. I'm like, oh shit. Chris Brown comes back out, still dancing, throws a jacket. Guy fucking catches it and folds it again. So like, that's his job, is to catch <laughs> Chris Brown, is to catch Chris Brown's clothing. I'm like, yo, like, do you not know that Costco pays $15 an hour? <laughs> I'm black and white, uh, which means I get to enjoy both sides of things. You know, it's always been interesting having white people try to figure out what I am, right? They'll be like, hey, uh, what are you? I like to fuck with them, be like, a Gemini. <laughs> They're like, ah. No, uh, you know, uh, how do I say? I'm like, oh, 5'10", I'm 5'10", 5'10". Five They'd be like, ah, uh, you know. And I'd be like, ah, I got it. I'm a Republican. <laughs> they always liked me more when I said that, but. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Hey, that shit was funny. Hell yeah. The second you got your first laugh, you was like, oh shit, these shits are gonna like, work. They laughed so much harder than the open mics. <laughs> Nobody was laughing. I told you. Bro, I felt like I'm the funniest guy ever. Y'all miss my shit? <laughs> Yo, first off, first off, let it be known. I, let it be known, I am the greatest sensei out here. Even though me and Reg think I killed it, there's only one opinion that really matters. The audience. Moment of truth. He's been doing comedy for about a week. And I want you to be very honest. You get to determine whether or not he keeps doing comedy. Stand up if you think Speedy deserves to keep doing comedy. Damn, why you made it so difficult? It should have been an applause. What's up with y'all? Y'all just, just don't feel like standing? Or your, leg, your legs hurt or something? What's going on? Who if you think Speedy should go back to his regular job? Y'all can be honest. Who was that? Who was that? Where'd that come from? All right, from? everybody. Give it up for him. One more time for Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, from your very first open mic to right now, how you feeling? I feel like a changed man. I feel like the stuff I said the first day was trash. The stuff I said today actually hit. A lot of the material was the same, but you figure out what they're laughing at, what to lose. It's a gradual process, yeah. but that's how you fine tune it. That high that you feeling? That's what I chase all day, man. Like that feeling of that, really bro, that feeling is, killing a crowd like that. It's hard to describe. Bro, two jokes in, I was borderline about to say like, yo, just call me Dave Chappelle, you know? <laughs> we did all of this. We did days of open mics. Am I fit for this job? Yo, you are definitely a stand-up comedian. Ah, I've been waiting a week to hear that. You did it, bro. I'm very proud yeah. of you, son. I'm a stand-up comedian, and with that, I'd like to tell you guys, I will never do stand-up comedy again. <laughs> it was a great couple days. I'm going out on top. Stand-up comedy is over. Never again. I hate these little kids on the train. 
You know, little kids on the train come, showtime, showtime, showtime. I'm like, it's time to shut up. I speak for all New Yorkers when I say, it's never the right time for showtime. You know, they always got that one fat kid in the crew. He just comes up and does like. That's it, he don't even dance, he just does that. It's fucking crazy.